if there's one thing I love, it's causing the publish industry to squirm. If there's two things I love, why that'd be the Stanley Cup playoffs, which I'm missing right now, so let's get on with this. Shall we? I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Books and Beer, our regular jaunt into the ever-evolving world of indie publishing. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and today we are going beyond the written word, beyond, beyond, and into the realm of video, magazines, and geekazines. Uh, our guest is Jeffrey Powers. Jeffrey, please introduce yourself. Uh, I just like to hear Jeffrey said as many times as possible during a given show. And uh, tell us what you are drinking. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Powers. I run a little website called Geek Azine. Think Magazine put in a geek. You got Geek Azine. I also run a couple other websites, including how to record podcasts for you podcasters out there. And I am drinking a Goose Island summertime because I really want it to be summertime right now. Yeah, Jeffrey uh, is in the about as far north as you can get, and we are about as far south. So eh, summer's here. It's 104 degrees. Yeah. Oh, really? So, <laughs> where are you exactly, Jeffrey? Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, geez. So you can my get... mom's. Yeah, my mom's from Madison, so oh. wow. Spent many, many, uh, much time growing up around there. So. Well, that's uh, cool. Right now, I am uh, enjoying the Arizona heat. I did not miss the snow up there, and have a stone in Joy by 517, which is always a fantastic beer. And I'm going to wrap things up with my old chub from the Oscar Blues Brewing Company. Fantastic stuff. Cheers, all. All right, so let's get right into it. So, Jeffrey, uh, tell us about your approach to the modern magazine or geekazine in the world of the web. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it's a modern approach to a magazine by any means. It's a uh, five years, five and a half years ago. I was looking for a, uh, I was looking for a niche in the tech market, and I started a little podcast uh, that was called the Show at the time. Uh, I moved from music podcasting to tech podcasting because of all the uh, RIAA issues that were uh, coming into play. But then uh, I just uh, I turned around and, and uh, I, once I started the show. I asked people, and somebody gave me a suggestion that didn't work, and but it gave, got me thinking to different things, and, and then it started making me think about e-zines, and I hated the idea of the word e-zine, and, uh, and so I said, well, what about a-zine? What if I just took that over? So geek zine was formed simply because of the fact I'm a geek. Um, we also have dork zine We also have sport zine and uh, many others in the a-zine spectrum. Is it a specific um, vowel issue that you have with the e zine, but you like the a zine? Are o zines okay? What was the issue that you had with e zines? Grammatical, simply put. <laughs> it, it, okay, uh, it, all right. it, it, it just e zine. E didn't, that answer. Ding, ding, it didn't ding, sound ding. right. It didn't sound right. It sounded easy. Uh, I don't like easy. I can't wait till we get to ebooks in a minute or two. So, <laughs> those are awesome. <laughs> You mean a books, right? Uh, okay, it's gonna be one of those shows. All right. All right. So, so with so with Geekazine, it's not a magazine. It's not something you hold in your printed hand, but you're following something similar. Um, yeah. It's uh, well, it was a podcast, and then I decided to uh, you know, I, I was gonna do news. I was gonna do different podcasts, and and it went from one to another to another. And right now, uh, uh, Geekazine, actually, there's three folds to, to Geekazine now. Um, you have Geekazine, and where, I do, where I go out and I do video interviews, or I have my show iPad 365, or my other show, Geek Smack. Um, and then I have, uh, I have news.geekazine.com, which I just opened up this weekend, to bring more news into it to kind of make it feel like a magazine. Because that's the one thing that everybody talked about was, why don't you make it more like a magazine? It's like, because that takes a lot of work and a lot of people, and I'm not a lot of work or a lot of people for, well, you know, well, I suppose you could be, cons I could be considered a lot of people, at least two in my life, but um, they, uh, it just, uh, it, it wouldn't work for my time because I had so many uh, irons in the fire. So, but now I have uh, news.geekazine.com and geekazine.com, and I'm also figuring out some other splits to it. 
And then once again, it was, uh, like I said, it was going to be the Azine idea, Dorkazine, uh, Sportazine, and uh, Wikazine is, is my wiki page, and TVazine is where you can find a lot of the videos. Okay, um, so I'm missing something essential, I think. What is the Azine component of the magazine that you brought to Geekazine that you think is essential? Why isn't this just a video show or a or I th- podcast I think or... I think I think you're thinking too much into it. It's just it was just an idea that I started and I liked it and it worked at the time and it's just geekazine. It's just a website. There's one thing Jeff can do a very good job. It is it is overthink things. Constantly. Can um, I? Yeah. Yeah, think about that for just a minute if you would. That'll that'll make like ten minutes we'll be done with that one. So, Jeffrey, you said something earlier uh, about how you could make it more magazine style, but you know that would take too much, and you don't have the kind of time for it. Yet, uh, most of what you do is produce video. You personally, you're 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 known in the podcasting world um, as a guy that produces video. Yet, when you look at at more people who are thinking about going to content, video is the hardest thing to produce. It's it's that which takes the most amount of time writing seems like it's inherently quicker and easier do you, I'm a gut, I guess you don't feel the same um, well it really depends on who you're talking to I mean uh, me of five years ago writing was a horrendous effort that I did not excel in by any means but fast forward five years I'm still horrendous but I have a feeling that I have learned a little bit from it so when I do do writing or do 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 writing, then it does it, it's a lot better, and so uh, and so I I don't have as many grammatical errors as I did five years ago. So for me, it was about recording. It was about doing a weekly podcast, and then later on in video. And yeah, it is some video. Some ways to do video is just completely impossible. But uh, it's just something I like to do, and and I I do pretty good at I think, I hope. So you gravitate toward the video medium more than writing, and I get that completely. And thank you for the clarification on the zine yeah. thing. You you just mentioned and, it a lot, so I was thought it might have been missing something. Yeah, and so and now, I I do do a lot of writing. I mean, I also have a website called How to Record Podcasts, and you'd think that there'd be a podcast attached to that, but the reality is, I I've seen a lot of these how to podcast websites out there where they they focus on the podcast and I don't know if that brings the message across properly so I ended up doing how to record podcasts without a podcast attached to it so I could explain through words about how podcasting how how to do this in podcasting or reviews and stuff like that okay well now that you made the shift over to video how do you find the content creation uh, process going? Is it easier to find content or create it? Is it just a different approach? It is definitely a different approach. I have I have three technically three shows to it, and uh, my first show is the Geek Smack, which is the flagship podcast out of it. Started as an audio file, uh, turned into a audio video show. You can watch it or listen to it, however you want to do it. Um, actually, two of the three shows are you can either watch or listen to. Um, the uh, Geek Smack is a weekly rundown of tech news, of geek news, and anything else that that uh, people uh, that are geeks would really enjoy. Um, then I then I created a show called iPad 365, which is all about iPad apps. So just uh, just yesterday, I published an uh, uh, an episode talking about apps for your treadmill. Uh, to get a better workout because I'm actually doing what's called 10,000 steps for the month of May, which uh, I go out every single morning and I get 10,000 steps in before I start my day, and which is it's actually pretty tough to do, um, but it's it's on this uh, getting healthier month. So I did uh, I did an iPad I did a couple iPad apps for uh, working on a treadmill, um, so you can feel like you're actually accomplishing something instead of just looking at a treadmill. Um, and then, of course, the Geekazine special media feed, which is when I go out, like I was just out at CA World in Las Vegas about three weeks ago, and I did some video interviews. I got to see Richard Branson speak. I did some highlights on that and put that up on YouTube. And uh, I did I do some, I do a lot of different videos 
for this uh, the the special media feed, so it's not really uh, this or that. It's 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 a hodgepodge sometimes. You're you're a pretty prolific creator of content. It sounds like I think I don't know how many uh, zines you've named and all the other projects you're working on. So what's the future hold specifically in in the idea of publishing? Already you're publishing this content right now, but when you and I met up at South by Southwest, we uh, talked a little bit about some opportunities uh, that you might experience as a content creator to move to publishing. Have you moved forward on any of those things? And what do you want to do? Um, well, about two years ago, I actually started writing a book, and I since then kind of gave it up. I decided that that's not the direction that I want to go, and not the direction I wanted to be known for. Um, when we talked at South by Southwest, I have another, and even another website. Yeah, I spread myself pretty thin. Uh, it's called Day in Tech History, and that's over at dayintechhistory.com, and it's basically a podcast, audio only, and it's a full rundown of tech history. Uh, on on an every day on the daily basis, like a couple of days ago, the Microsoft Mouse uh, it celebrated its uh, 30th anniversary. Um, let's see, let's see, we got uh, today, which is uh, uh, um, oh, I can't even think of it. I think I can think of yesterday's uh, first band from the internet, first pa person band from the internet. Today was the iMac G3 was first introduced. So uh, at that time, what I was thinking of doing was actually uh, taking the information from Day in Tech History. And writing an ebook companion, uh, which would then I could then put into an iPad app or maybe uh, get on Amazon or work as an ebook as my first creation. So it sounds like you have not only a staggering mix of media in here, but also across all different um, lifespans, for lack of a better term. You're doing news that's really, really short. Um, you know, if your new stuff isn't going to be as relevant, you know, six months from now, but you're also doing historical and midterm and long-term things. So uh, very impressive mix of, of uh, both media and content types. Thank you. Very impressive. You, you just thought you were busy, Jeff. Yeah. This guy. Yeah. No, I got nothing. I'm slacking yeah, over here. It's just a shame. That's why I wanted to chat with him. Um, so, so Jeffrey, one thing I also know about you is you are very good at getting content and many of the should-be authors that we speak to uh, really don't do a good job of that. They don't do a, a, a they're concerned about going out, getting people to interview, helping other people besides them bring stuff to the table. They just assume it has to come out of their head and I think you're living proof that you can get content from lots of different ways. Do you have any last tips you might want to give somebody who's thinking about going out and, and finding other people to pull information from because you seem to be often good at that? Well, I, I would suggest it in a twofold way. Um, and this goes back to my, and forgive the word, Amway days. Uh, back when I actually did do Amway for a little while. And the one thing that they said was, if you focus locally, you will stay locally. If you focus nationally, you will get people that will follow you. So I'll, I'll give you an example here. Madison, Wisconsin, 260,000 people here, which is a really nice round number. Uh, for uh, for this part, and I could get to about maybe one percent of that, which would be about two thousand people. However, if I spread my seed out to people in Arizona, to people in uh, New York, to people in LA, uh, then they're starting to look at my content, and not only do I get information from them, but they turn around and become semi evangelists for me. So if I did put out a book, I can then send it out to to you, Evo, or you, Jeff, and then you can then say, "Hey, do you say, hey, Jeff, Jeffrey Powers has a book on the day in tech history, for example. Here it is, and uh, and go buy it." So all of a sudden, my contact that has not only given me information that I needed for this book turns around and becomes a person that promotes this book, and especially if if I was to say, if I was to put a footnote in. Uh, uh, saying that uh, I talked to Evo Terra and this is what he said. Evo, you would actually you would buy the book because sure. your name is in there, right? Right. So then you become an evangelist on that, and poof, you're all of a sudden uh, you're 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 getting more sales from right. that. Right. Makes sense. So that's that's why you do it. How do you do it? How do I do it? <laughs> Lots of different ways. Um, how do I? How do I Can go you out? Capture. And, I mean, do you always have like video camera with you to just pop it open and capture something when it hits? Um, are you? I mean, do you just have you developed a long 
you know queue of stories you're working on that you always have something in the pipeline? A lot of those, a lot of the stories that I work on have been set up for me. Like for instance, uh, uh, going out to CA World, I had four interviews, main interviews. I knew exactly what I was going to do that weekend, and I was at the spots that I needed to do. So I, yeah, I did pre-plan for that. Um, if you're talking about, oh, a good example, a better example is South by Southwest. I went out there, but I didn't plan for too much. I, I had my, uh, I had certain events that I was going to go to. But there was a whole bunch of Austin that I just did not schedule. Um, like, for instance, the Wiley party, which I ended up going to and doing the interview with, with Evo. And uh, it, it's literally just going up, talking to somebody, and then having the camera. Now, in that case, I, I had the camera at all times. But I always have a, we always have a camera with us uh, nowadays with a, smart, with a smartphone. And you'd be surprised what type of interviews you can get with something like that. I think that's it. Be prepared, be flexible, but uh, you know sometimes planning is not a not a bad thing to go. Well, we're a smidge over time, uh, Jeffrey. Thank you very much for being on the program with us today. Definitely. Thank you very much. Sorry, I was long-winded. It's quite all right. Quite all right, because that way we don't have to have Jeff talk anymore. Anyhow, we will have more information about Jeffrey and the well, at least some of the things he talked about. I don't know that there is enough electrons to talk about all of the things that he talked about. But we'll link to as much of that as we possibly can. You can find the show notes at booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of e Publish Unum. We help authors survive and thrive in a digital world. For more information, education, and classes, check us out at epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I'm Evo Terra. Thanks for enjoying the show.